What is up ladies and gentlemen? My name is James Eeks and thank you so much for checking out this video. This is my first ever YouTube video and I'm super excited to bring you guys a how to make advanced EV spreads guide for Pokemon VGC. Like I just said, this is my first ever YouTube video, so I'm super excited. I'm a bit nervous, so hopefully things go pretty well. Uh, everything's not going to be perfect, you know, if I make a few jump cuts here and there, that's just me trying to edit out any annoying sounds like ums or coughs or anything. I want to make this as quick and precise and as efficient for you guys to watch as possible, so bear with me on that one. I'm going to be looking a little bit to my left right here. That's going to be my script uh, that I typed up for this video. I want to make sure I don't miss any details, anything like that. So, uh, yeah, that's why I'm going to be looking over there. But, yeah, I just want to say thank you guys so much for clicking on this video. I've been playing VGC since late 2013, early 2014. I've been invited to two world championships. So, I think I am a pretty well-established player, and I think that I have a lot of knowledge that I can bring to you guys. So I'm super excited. I'm trying to be what I think VGC, the VGC community needs and doesn't really have. So I, I'm going to be here trying my best to uh, really do my thing uh, for you guys and to make VGC the best it can be. So uh, thank you guys so much for even checking me out here. I do stream full time on Twitch. I stream every single day of the week except Wednesdays and Saturdays. And I stream from 2 p.m. PST to 6 p.m. PST. So I would love it if you guys went over and checked me out over there. Street, I stream full-time VGC content. This guide is going to be about making an advanced EV spread. So we all know the old meme about like 252, 252 spreads. And some people say, oh, just use them while you're learning. And then other people say, oh, 252 spreads suck. Like, why would you ever do that? That's so suboptimal. Well, I'm here to kind of clear the air on that. A 252 EV spread is not bad at all. Not every EV spread should be complex, okay? 252 spreads have their place, most usually on offensive Pokemon who want max attack, max speed, but that's not always the case either. And I just wanna clear the air that you do not have to have a complex EV spread to, be, to have your Pokemon be effective. And so, yeah, I just wanna clear the air on that right now. So I kind of see EV spreads as a form of like self-expression and you can really show your understanding of the game at a deeper level through your EV spread. Now, I don't want you to be intimidated from that sentence. It takes a really long time to understand this stuff and the understanding of complex EV spreads will come with time and experience playing the game. And so honestly, I think playing with just 252, 252 spreads at the beginning while you're still learning the game, because there's so many different hurdles to learn, I think that running something like that is honestly pretty good because if you're trying to make something complex and you don't understand how it works, you're not going to really be getting the best out of your Pokemon. And so today I'm going to try and help you guys understand and help you guys get educated enough to maybe start building your own advanced EV spreads. And so the first thing I really want to show you guys here is an example of the bump. Okay, and so some of you guys might already know this, but there is something that some players have deemed like the stat bump and that's when you're investing evs into a stat where you have a positive nature in it for example here on rotom if you are investing into modest rotom meaning my special attack is raised there will eventually come a point where you get two points of stat for your single eight evs so right here that's actually where that is so see how I'm at 28 EVs and then every eight EVs raises you one stat point. So right here, you can see that when I raised the stat from 28 to 36, it actually went up to 143 from 141. So we like to deem that the stat bump. And while this isn't 100% necessary to pay attention to all the time, sometimes it's nice if you can afford to hit that bump with your EV spread because you do optimally get the most amount of value out of your EVs if you're able to hit that. The EV spread I'm going over today will be on my choice specs Rotom Wash and I actually do hit the bump in stats which is nice but I also just want to talk about the bump in a way that I don't want you guys to feel like you have to hit the bump with every single spread you make. It's just something to kind of keep in the back of your mind like if you can hit it that's great but if your Pokemon can achieve all the goals that you want without hitting that bump, that's totally fine too. 
So I just wanted to uh, kind of show you guys that. So for example, 36 is where it is for this Rotom Wash, right? But let's take Braviary's attack. We're gonna make him adamant, so it's positive. And then we are going to go up and up until we get the boom. There it is. This one, see, this one's 52 and 44. You'll get the extra two points right here, which is 52 to get the double on Braviary and then 36. It's usually not too high of an amount of EVs, but it totally depends. All it depends on is the base stat of the Pokemon. So all Pokemon with 123 base attack will hit the bump at 52 EVs. But to be honest, I don't even think there's another Pokemon with 123 attack EVs. Braviary is pretty weird like that. Same with Rotom. He's got some pretty weird stats. But 105, there's plenty of other uh, special attackers. 105. One other thing I do want to go over is for some offense Pokemon, when you're going to be like max attack, max speed, you can actually get one more point out of your EV spreads by taking eight out of attack and then distributing them to defense and special defense. So right now, I'm just going to show you guys uh, this right now. So here's Braviary, and he is in four, 252, 252. He's, in, he's investing in three stats. Now, you can only invest into an odd number of stats to not end up wasting an EV point. So what that means is if I wanted to invest in all six of my stats, there would end up being a wasted stat point. See, as you can see, I have these four right here at the bottom. Adding four to this attack stat is not gonna change it. Adding four to any of these is not gonna change it either because it, intervals of eight are how you actually raise a stat when you're at level 50, except for the first four. Now, that is what's very important about this example that I'm about to show you guys is, so let's take it out of special attack. We obviously don't want that. But now let's look at this spread. If I had four HP, four defense, four special defense, and 244 attack, I'm investing in five stats. That's an odd number, so I'm not wasting a stat. And then also let's take out these defenses, right? And we put it right back into the attack. So that's eight EVs that it takes to raise the stat from 191 to 192. Okay. And so I take those eight EVs out. It goes down by one. And now I have eight EVs. And the first four EVs at level 50 raise it by one stat. So I'm going to put these eight into one into defense, well, four, and then four into special defense. See, I just raised my special defense and defense from 95 to 96. So I turn to this one stat point of attack from 192 to 191 i turned that into two stat points effectively doubling it by putting it into the first four of defense and special defense i turned that one stat point into two which is really cool and sometimes you're not going to want this because you just your offensive calculations are actually better with max attack and then you don't care about the bulk especially if you were like a focus sash for example you definitely wouldn't want this but this is just something to think about. Uh, another option to pay attention to. Really quick, I ran, this is on my Gigantamax Butterfree team. I ran uh, 244 HP and then put it into defense, special defense, and then I got that extra point of special attack. So I actually benefited from this by investing in five stats instead of just max HP, max speed, and then four in defense or special defense. I got that extra point out, which was cool. And here's a quick example of a Pokemon that you might end up having to waste EVs on, which is unfortunate, but that's sometimes how it goes. And it's almost always when you're making a trick room Pokemon. Now, like I said prior, we always want to try and invest into an odd number of stats. But as you can see with this Tyranitar, I want to put EVs into my HP, attack, defense, and special defense. All of those are important to me as a trick room Tyranitar, but unfortunately, we're going to end up wasting a point that way because we're going to get left with this extra four and there's nothing we can do. We can, there's nothing we can benefit from using it. If I put that into special attack, I don't have a special attack on this Tyranitar. So that's just a wasted point. And then putting it into my speed is also not going to benefit me at all. It might even hinder me if I'm trying to outspeed certain things. I mean, under speed certain things. 
So on Trick Room Pokemon, that is where you are usually going to run into wasting your stats. See, I could be, you know, max HP, max attack, and then four defense. But there are going to be some complicated spreads, maybe like a Hatterene, for example, where you're going to want stuff in HP, defense, special attack, and special defense. And you're going to end up wasting a point, and there's nothing we can do about that. Do not end up throwing that into your speed, uh, because that can mess up your Trick Room speed tiers. And don't throw it into your attack, because... Having a higher attack on a special attacker is suboptimal for taking foul play damage and confusion damage. So definitely something to watch out for. One little disclaimer I want to make is that this guide is going to be assuming 31 IVs in each stat that matter. Uh, I highly recommend you use perfect IV Pokemon. Uh, I, I'm not going to be going into depth about Pokemon with 30 or 29 IVs in a stat. If you do want to... If that's the best you have, then you can mess around in the calculator how to do that, but that messes completely with the amount of EVs that things will take to get to certain stat points, and so we're only going to be focusing on 31 IVs. So before we get right into my Rotom Wash set, I do want to kind of lay the groundwork here of every single Pokemon's EV spread is going to be team dependent. Now, you guys aren't just going to be able to take my Rotom Wash spread and throw it on your team, and it's not going to mesh absolutely perfectly. You guys are going to see in this video why my Rotom Wash meshes so well with my team, and I hope that when you guys make your own EV spreads, it's going to mesh perfectly with your team as well. You guys will understand more about what I'm talking about when I go over why my EVs are how they are, but for now, um, I just want to lay the groundwork that my Rotom Wash he's trying to hit all these speed tiers that are based off of paralysis actually and a lot of teams aren't going to be using paralysis so maybe this road and wash won't work perfectly on your team so i just want to reiterate that ev spreads on pokemon are not always going to work on every single team so here we are let's start jumping into my choice specs rotom wash spread now i made this spread all by myself i've been using it on my stream i've been using this gmax butterfree team with the six you guys see on your screen right now and i've had a lot of success with it i've been hovering in the top 100 on the vgc 2020 master ball ladder so i think this team is actually really solid it does have its issues but we won't get too deep into that we're just talking about ronan wash and i think he's been an amazing member of the team and i also think that this specific east vv spread is going to really give you guys a good idea of what you can achieve with custom EV spreads and how you should go about thinking about your EV spreads. So the cool thing about this specific EV spread is I'm going to be showing you guys how a Pokemon can benefit a lot from defensive EVs and offensive EVs on the same spread, which is really cool because Rotom is actually going to be fulfilling a lot of different roles instead of just hitting really hard or just taking hits. This Rotom can actually do both through the really cool EV spread that I created. So I'm excited to elaborate more on that for you guys. So the first thing we're gonna talk about here is my Rotom's speed. Now my Rotom hits a speed stat of 109, which is 20 EVs. And first and foremost, the reason why I went with this is I wanted to take full advantage of paralysis. Now, my Rotom Wash is really likes to use Discharge next to my Lightning Rod Raichu or my Ground Type Excadrill. And you can get a dis you can get paralyzes from discharge really easily, 30%, and it's a 30% chance on both Pokemon. So it's gonna happen more often than not. So I actually wanted my speed stat to benefit greatly from potentially paralyzing Pokemon, as well as my Raichu is paralyzing Pokemon with Nuzzle very often. And even on top of that, Gigantamax Butterfree having the chance to paralyze from Max Befuddle. So my Rotom Wash's speed really is dictated by the paralysis condition. So with a speed stat of 109 on my Rotom, that's 20 EVs invested into speed, I'm actually able to outspeed a paralyzed max speed Dragapult, which hits a speed of 213, and it drops down to 106 when he is paralyzed. And obviously I'm 109, so I'm three points faster than that. And another cool thing about the speed of 109 is I'm also able to outspeed Pokemon that are one point faster than Dragapult, such as a Choice Scarf Vanillux, for example, wants to be at least one point faster than Dragapult. So I'm actually able to outspeed those Pokemon as well after I paralyze them, which is really cool. Now, when I bring Rotom to a game, I'm almost always going to bring it with Raichu. So that's why Paralysis is my go-to speed control. 
like for this team, the speed is completely dictated by paralysis, so it's not really far-fetched or crazy to be making my EV spread rely on paralysis because that's really what I'm trying to spread around a lot with this team. Secondly, something great about this EV stat on Rotom is I'm actually going to outspeed all the lazy spread Rotoms, if you will. So if somebody were to go 252 HP, 252 defense, and four speed or four special attack on their Rotom, I'm actually going to be outspeeding them. And then some people might even try to speed creep above those lazy spreads and go 12 EVs. Well, I'm also going to outspeed them as well with my Rotom while still staying bulky and strong like you can see in the spread there. So even putting those 20 EVs on a bulky Mon is actually really good because I'm actually going to end up potentially outspeeding a good amount of fellow Rotom washes that I run into. And thirdly, my team uh, featured Togekiss on it which wanted to hit the same speed goals as Rotom. You know, I wanted Tokus to outspeed Dragapult at effectively minus two speed uh, being paralyzed. And I didn't want my two Pokemon to speed tie. So if you guys didn't notice, this Rotom actually outspeeds the Dragapult by two, excuse me, by three, and then it outspeeds the things that speed creep it by two. And so Togekiss is actually 108 speed which means that Togekiss is achieving the same goals as my Rotom while not speed tying with my Rotom, which would be extremely annoying if they were speed tied. Uh, the reason why having your own Pokemon speed tie is, re is really annoying is because it can cause a lot of problems when you're trying to attack around berries or you're trying to knock out one Pokemon and then have the attack get directed into the other. It can make a lot of problems if your Pokemon are speed tied. So I highly recommend you guys do not have that. And so I know this can be a lot to take in, all these weird little nuanced speed things, but this is the advanced EV spread guide, you know? So um, that's just how it's gonna go. We're, we're gonna learn slowly but surely, I promise. So uh, let's move on to Rotom's bulk now. So the first thing I wanted to achieve with my bulk on my Rotom wash was I wanted to ensure that I can survive a max overgrowth from Jolly Gyarados. And so as you can see here from this calc, um, Jolly, max attack Gyarados, uh, and this is max overgrowth, on my Rotom Wash spread is a 0% chance to kill, which I valued very much so. I'm also able to KO the Gyarados back in one hit, even through Wakam Berry or Assault Vest with my own Thunderbolt, which was super cool. Generally, um, most Rotoms can only achieve one of these goals, so I could be max speed, max special attack, and I'd be able to take out the Gyarados in one hit before I get hit. Or I would have to be so bulky and be able to take... So that I can take the G-Max Overgrowth. And then I might not be able to KO an Assault Vest or a Wakan Berry back. But through Choice Specs boosting my attack and then my EVs making me so bulky, I can actually achieve both of those goals with this Rotom Wash spread, which is super cool. I chose to go with max HP on my Rotom since it's Rotom's weakest stat. Generally, Pokemon with low HP and high defensive stats benefit the most from putting EVs into HP. Um, and that goes vice versa as well. So Pokemon with high HP and low defenses actually benefit the most from investing into their defensive stats, which I'll show a little example right here. So I found this nice little example here with a Waylord. This is a max special attack, max speed Waylord against a standard bulky Rotom Wash. So as you guys can see here, Rotom's normal Thunderbolt has a 12.5% chance to Oko this Waylord with its four leftover EVs in its HP. Now watch what happens when we change this into special defense. So you can see that Waylord has 246 HP and right here, the highest damage roll Rotom Wash can get is 248, which will KO, and then 246 is the second highest damage roll, and that will actually KO as well. So watch what happens when we take the EV out of HP, and we put that four just right into special defense. Boom. Thunderbolt is no longer able to KO. It doesn't have a chance at all. And its highest damage roll is actually 242. That's six points of HP difference through that slight distribution change of the stats, which is something that you guys should always be keeping in mind with your Pokemon. 
while this example isn't super complex always keep it in mind when making a spread like i can promise you guys for example running a gastrodon with max hp and four defense is gonna take an of a big physical attack worse than if you had more in defense and less in HP. Which you're gonna have to fiddle around on the calculator to figure those out, but I can promise you it's something to always think about if you have a Pokemon with really high HP and low defenses, or vice versa. A Pokemon that's really strong against Rotoms in general is Duraludon actually. And um, so a Choice Specs Duraludon would actually take out my Rotom Wash with a Draco Meteor. But I actually survive a Life Orb Modest Draco Meteor from Duraludon 87.5% of the time. Let me pull that up. So there's only a 12.5% chance that my Rotom Wash is okoed by a Modest Life Orb Draco Meteor from Duraludon. And through my time playing VGC 2020, I feel like I've ran into Life Orb Duraludons way more often than Choice Specs. So that is also a part of making EV spreads is kind of weighing the risk reward of how you want to distribute your EVs. And so my personal choice I made with this spread was to be able to take the Life Orb Draco Meteor more often than not while sacrificing the one hit KO to the Specs Duraludon, which I don't think I'm going to be running into as often. So as you guys just saw, I really wanted my Rotom to be able to go toe to toe with Duraludon. I thought that was the main special attacking threat i wanted my rotom to be prepared for but another one that's also really annoying to deal with is draco meteors from ragapul and so with the same evs that we just saw with duraludon i am actually able to take a modest choice specs draco meteor from dragapult with the same chance to survive a 12.5 percent chance to um oko which means i'll be surviving 87.5% of the time, which I think is really good for how I've been distributing my EVs because you'll see that my other EVs are also important. So you've, you guys have seen my speed and why I did it, my defense and HP, why I did it. Let's get into why I have the 60 special attack I have in my room. So when I was going through the process of making this EV spread, you know, I made that HP, defense, special defense, and speed, and then I dumped the rest into special attack, but I wanted to know what that dump of stats was actually going to accomplish and if i needed all 60 of those in special attack or if i could go and drop you know a little more in defense or a little more in special defense so i started fiddling around with my attacks and right here is a really important calc actually that i found was my choice specs rotom wash with 60 special attack evs will actually oko uh dynamax rhyperior with four in hp and max special defense dynamax as i just said 93.8% of the time. That is not in sand. He will not be able to kill him in the sand. But I thought that stat was really important to hit. Rhyperior is a huge threat to a lot of teams and being able to Oko Rhyperior with that much special attack was actually really important. And that's right at 60 where I have the highest chance to kill it. So I thought that was really beneficial. And so as I previously stated a little bit earlier that my Rotom was actually able to kill Gyarados back after surviving the max overgrowth. Uh, I actually saw that my 60 special attack EVs were enough to deal with it. So as you guys can see here, this my Thunderbolt against um, Gyarados is actually able to take it out in one hit. This is an Assault Vest Gyarados. And then if this was a, let's say, Wakonberry Gyarados, we also are able to kill it in one hit. And then if he is Dynamax, if he's Dynamax Wakonberry, we're not going to be taking him out as well as Dynamax Assault Vest. But Dynamax of any other item, you know, like a Lumberry, for example, we are actually able to clap back and take out Gyarados in one hit as well. So this was just with that 60 special attack dump, right? Where I was just like, okay, let's put in a special attack and see how it goes. And um, you can actually see that this kills Gyarados quite well. So I was also satisfied when I looked at that calc about my 60 special attack. And then finally, another thing that I wanted to look at with uh, Rotom was how it's going to fare against a pretty standard Babiri Berry Togekiss. And um, as we can see, Discharge is actually a guaranteed two hit KO with the minimum damage doing 56.5%, which is really cool because a lot of Togekisses are gonna be trying to use Follow Me, for example, to redirect the attack from their partner. But with Discharge, I'm gonna be not only hitting Togekiss, but its partner as well. So if that ever happens where Togekiss uses follow me, Rotom's attack is going to potentially paralyze her, put her in range of dying to a discharge the next turn, 
and it's not going to be protecting the partner. So Discharge on Rotom, super helpful, and the fact that it hits that damage threshold of doing at least half to Togekiss is really, really powerful. So guys, in conclusion, let's take a look at what my Rotom Wash was actually able to achieve with the EV spread that I created. So as you guys can see, I'm able to outspeed a paralyzed max speed Dragapult and anything meant to speed creep Dragapult by one if they're paralyzed. I am also outspeeding opposing Rotoms that only have four or 12 EVs in their speed stat, which is also cool. And I outspeed my own Togekiss by one so that I'm avoiding speed ties. And defensively, we survive a max overgrowth from Jolly Gyarados 100% of the time. We survive Life Orb Draco Meteor from Duraludon 87.5% of the time, and we survive a modest Choice Specs Draco Meteor from Dragapult 87.5% of the time. And then offensively, we Oko a variety of Gyarados in many different situations, either with Thunderbolt or Discharge, depending on the item that it's holding. And we Oko extremely bulky Dynamax Rhyperior with Specs Hydro Pump outside of the sand, and we also are able to two-hit KO a standard Babiri Berry Togekiss with Discharge. And then while it's also not super important, we do hit that plus two special attack bump with our Rotom Wash. So guys, I really hope this guide was helpful. I want to thank you guys so much for stopping by and spending your time with me and being willing to learn and listen to what I have to say. Uh, I really hope that this helps you guys create your own EV spreads and kind of helps you get into the mindset of, well, I really want to be able to OCO this Pokemon while not dying to this Pokemon and yada, yada, yada. It's really important to know those kind of things with what's really common in the meta, like for example, maybe wanting your Gastrodon to be able to take a Life Orb, Adamant, Max Quake from Excadrill. You know, you want to be able to take those really common attacks in the format. And for Rotom, you know, I really want to be taking out those Gyarados. And then them wanting to kill me back with Max Overgrowth is what they want to do. So that's kind of how I went off the basis of this EV spread is starting with the Gyarados. And then I kind of trickled down into a lot of other details. So I think it ended up being really well. So guys, once again, I want to say thank you so much for chilling with me today. I want you guys to check me out on Twitch where I stream full-time VGC content five days a week from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. PST every day except for Wednesdays and Saturdays. Those are my days off. Uh, I'm going to be making a lot more YouTube content, guides, battles, podcasts, you name it. I am the, I am the VGC guy and I hope you guys really had a fun time with me. You guys can... Check me out on Twitch where I uh, love to interact with my viewers. I love to have a good time laughing, chilling. It's always a great time over there. So guys, thank you guys so much. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel. This will not be the last you see from me. And I hope you guys have a great one. Peace.